Di Marco early. Early! Oh my word! Well, if he meant it, it's one of the goals of the season from Di Marco, regardless. Hello and welcome back to Say A Spotlight. This is episode 99.9, not episode 100, as we are still waiting for Matthew's return, who will be back next episode. But until then, I am joined once again by the lifesaver, Luke Mintoff. The saver of lives, that is my name. And uh, I think the gesture to save your brother, the um, honors of the 100th episode is a, is a good way to round off... Uh, an anniversary of sorts. Yes, this is a celebration, in fact. It is currently 10 a.m. on yes. a Saturday, and we are drinking Moe Chandon. I don't think I've ever started a day, first of all, drinking champagne. I don't think I've ever started a day drinking yeah. such fancy champagne, to be honest. But uh, yeah. cheers to that, anyways. Cheers. Ding, 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 ding. There we go. So, yes, our goal of the week was Di Marco's goal from 56 meters out. Luke. Yes, sir. Did he mean it? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, right? I don't think so. <laughs> that was definitely... Even the, way, even the way he, like, after he crosses, crosses or whatever, shoots the ball, you see he stumbles a bit. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think he really misfired. He really misfired his cross, to be honest with you. Very unlike him, because he's got an absolute peach of a left foot, and usually he, he so, nails every... Jake, you don't always you don't always shoot on target. Yeah, that's it. You and know? sometimes you don't shoot on target, but you hit an even better target. There you go. So sometimes you go for that seven and you end up getting a ten. Exactly. And then you say, how the hell did I pull that? Yeah, straight out of his ass, that's how. That is there were... still the hands down goal of the week, probably goal of the yeah. year at this rate. Honestly, it's a Puskas contender. It's, 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 just, it's just, even the way the ball was built up, yeah. like they, they were playing tiki-taka football between each other. Yeah. And then he just finally just <laughs> released the Kraken and just, uh, yeah, he just told Tarazi, I'm sorry, brother. He is, I think, my favorite Inter player that, that's ever been. He's so good. He's so yeah. lovely to watch as yeah. well. Yeah. And he's so no bullshit as well. Completely. He just, I'm here to wreck face. Yeah. And, and that's it. Such a direct player as well. He only goes forward, notice. He just, he is just, he just reminds me so much of a, Pitbull yeah, yeah. on steroids, ready to just, I don't know, yeah. do everything that, that they need to get that goal. He's it's, always ready. I have never seen him come on the pitch and not ready to play football. Yeah, totally. And I, that's a quality that you don't actually see so often nowadays in football. It's true. It's, it's an actual older feature of, of, of the players we grew up with. The likes of, you know, the Maldinis, the Gattuzos, the... Yeah. The Pier Laws, the Del Piros, where they're just to play football, no nonsense. And he reminds me, he reminds me of this older generation in a, in a, in a, in a new form as well, because yeah. he, ha- he brings the new type of football as well. He's not, not a traditional type of football in the sense that he plays old, old school, but, um, his attitude, I think, is stellar. Yes, and he, he has the perfect combination, like you said, like he's a pit bull, right? He's, he's got this combination of being rough around the edges and aggressive, but also so elegant when he strikes the ball and when he whips the ball. And like, he's a very technically gifted player, highly technically gifted. Absolutely. I, 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 I'd have to say, I think he's, he's, I'm going to get hated for this. Okay, let's see. Better than Theo Hernandez. I think he's, the, <laughs> I think he's the best left back in the world right now. In the world? Well, you know what, man. Um, the, with the form Theo's on right now, I would. Demarco is probably the best left back in the league form wise, right? Um, when they're both on top of their game, I'm not so sure though. However, because Theo Hernandez can be absolutely unplayable when he's at his best. Sure, dude. Like, uh, uh, look, the skill ceiling, like, like how mm-hmm. good someone can get. I think Theo's higher. Yeah. But Theo's very inconsistent as well. Yes, yes. So and he, he'll, he'll have those slumps. He'll have those bad moods. And for me, as a person. I I I I appreciate someone who's more consistent and more on on his game every mm-hmm. game more than someone who can be better overall. But yeah. this is me. I know other people might appreciate the 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 you know flamboyancy of their hand because it's very nice to watch as well. Yes, yes. yes. I'm, I have you know I'm not going to say anything about him. In the yeah. past, I used to think he was over overhyped, but I'm very I've been very very wrong about that. I just have been wrong about Leao. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but in my opinion. Just what I prefer. Fair enough, yes. Um, two very different players, despite playing the same position. I wouldn't say they're super different, actually. I, I think that... Um, the way they play football is actually... The way 
I think they conceptualize the game is very similar. Okay. It's all about it's all about using their pace, using their strength, and using their their, their grit to go forward. Mm-hmm. That's that's the same. But how they how they how they transition that into the game of football is very different then. Yeah, yeah. Theo yeah. is more about using his pace, using his shooting ability, and using his intimidation, sort of mm-hmm. inverted commas, to sort of then open up play for the likes of Leao, for the likes of you know Rinders or Gorgiru to then get that opportunity to score. Yeah. De Marco is more orientated to give those assists. He's yes. more orientated to give that pass to to Martinez or to Ram to then create the goal. But then he also has just as just as uh, Theo has the ability to score as well. Absolutely, yes, yes. Um, two very good players. Um, Theo Hernandez, obviously, with a cheeky edge to his game as well, winning those fouls and kind of advancing, taking the play up little by little. Like wins a foul at the halfway line, gets yeah. the ball again, drives oh. or wins a foul. A little you know, bit it's, it's a bit of American football. In a way. It is. A bit he like drives the ball <laughs> forward, true. just earns those fouls, and just. Piles up the pressure, just as in like an American football game yeah. where you you're constantly moving forward to the to, to the true. to the um at T zone. I guess so. I'm not a big fan. Shame American. on you. I should love all kinds of football, yeah, all kinds of sports as well. I'm all about European football, baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> Other goal of the week contenders. There were a few peaches this week. Dragusin's first ever goal in Serie A was a brilliant volley that looked almost animated the way he struck that ball so sweetly. That was the first goal of this match day. Beautiful goal. Kovalenko's first time winner and at the time... That was very Napoli nice. Huh? Was really Actually, nice. Yeah, that was a quite a good goal. Yeah. And he had fallen off the face of the earth, Kovalenko. Yeah, I hasn't well. heard of him in ages. And then he just comes on and scores the winner against the defending champions. Absolutely amazing. Um, gets Garcia sacked. Gets Garcia sacked for the return of I, Matari. I, I have another take about that. But it's really there. Okay, okay, okay. And Bonaventura's unsavable shot on the turn off the crossbar was a great goal for me as well. Because it was... It was it, great, Mike... It was a very nice goal. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I don't know. I don't. I, w- I wouldn't say it's a goal of the week contender. It's a very nice technique. Yeah. Very nice for a guy like him, at his age, to still be be able to do such things yeah. with such ease. Because it makes he makes it look easy. I don't of know how the, how the hell you can do that at his age. Like how can his knees support that? You but, know? <laughs> but I don't know if it's goal of the week. It's a very good goal. Don't get me wrong. Like the way he turns, the way he just manages to without even looking at the post have an ability to just strike it on goal with such accuracy. I think the other two goals I'd agree, those are a bit of contenders, but yeah. this one, this one's just a nice goal in my opinion. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, opinions, like, they're just like belly buttons. They are. Everyone's is your, got yours, one. And you are out here. Mine is a ninny. Mine is a ninny as well. I think you have to, like, dig deep to find mine. <laughs> <laughs> it must be filthy all the time. It must be filthy, yeah. Good God. Do you, ever, do you ever clean your belly button? I do. Just, yeah. when you, I put, shower, you put soap put inside? My, yeah, so I soap thing. up my finger and clean it out. You finger know? your belly button? Yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> you got to get deep, bro. <laughs> if you appreciate our content, you can like, follow and subscribe on all social media platforms. If you would like to support us even further, you can subscribe to our Patreon for three ninety nine a month. That's the size of... Uh, that's the same price as a uh, chicken nugget meal at McDonald's, I believe. So, wow, well, I mean, you know... It's not that much, yeah. Give Jake those chicken nuggets, guys. Yes, he deserves them. Okay. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our patrons, Anthony, Luca, Argento, Matthias, Matthias, Theo, Mike, Luke Mintoff, you're oh, thank wow. you very much. Oh, Jose, Lena, Andy, Alan, and Edward, thank you very much for your continued support, guys. Um, you guys are all legends. You are. Legends, legends of the game. Love you all. Your support drives us to stay consistent and improve our show. Thank you very much. So, yeah, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. The menu for today features the Derby della Capitale, Lazio Roma, a boring, goalless draw. Do you agree? I would call it boring. Mm. I, would call it, I, I would call it expected, though. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. wouldn't say it was a boring game. I think the first half was good. The second half almost plateaued a little bit, no? I don't know. Actually, I think I, I, I'm, I'm more disappointed in Roma, but then again, I'm expecting them to play that way in big games. Yeah. Lazio... But- Controlled the game from start to finish, yeah, in my yeah. opinion, and they had many chances. It's just a pity that they have the likes of um, washed up Immobile up front. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get into the details shortly. Let's do the quick rundown. There is Inter two Frosinone nil, uh, a very street smart performance by Inter over there, and Frosinone once again showing that they have a bit of fight in them. Lecce two Milan two Milan just can't hold a lead. 
So Juve Juventus 2, Cagliari 1. Juventus continue to win in very pragmatic ways. Their consistency is becoming a very powerful weapon. Napoli nil, Empoli 1, the upset of the weekend. Fiorentina 2, Bologna 1. Derby dell'Apennino, I believe is what it is called. Pennino. Yeah, Apennino. Um, Fiorentina were the victors over there. Udinese continue to prove that they are a side that is very tough to beat as they held Atalanta at home. 1-1. One, one. Sassuolo 2, Salernitana 2. Can you, will you ever get to, to discuss a Sassuolo victory on this podcast, man? I cry. You cry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those of you who are listening for the first time, Mentov is a Sassuolo faithful. Um, number 9, Monza 1, Torino 1. Another interesting game over there. I was surprised saw... about that one. Yeah. I, I really thought more uh, that Monza would win that game. I thought they would too. Um, we'll... But then again... Torino is also hard not to do. They are, they are, they are, they are. Um, I really, I'm really liking Colpani, man. I was thinking of buying his kit. Since he's, in, he's might be a good investment, his kit, Colpani. He's going to be a great player. Wait, let's wait. No, man. Let's wait. It's clear. Let's wait. It's clear, let's bro. Wait. He's, no. He gives me that 90s fantasy Hold, hold kind the of... phone. I know you want to answer that phone, but hold it for just a bit longer. <laughs> okay. I agree with you. This uh, year he's looking fabulous. He looks great, man. But... What? But but what? but wait, <laughs> but wait a bit because you know why I have a theory. I have a theory about Monza. Mm. I have a feeling like every year there's this player that they really put a lot of hype and focus onto, mm -hmm. and last year was Churia. Oh yeah, and la and this year he has fallen off but the Churia, place. Churia never showed the Colpani. Oh, dude, are you Churia kidding me? Was great with his positional awareness, dude. The it wasn't the tech. He never displayed the technique and the skill set and the versatility that Colpani is displayed. Colpani is a natural. I don't know, dude. The the amount of the, the amount of goal. He, I think he had scored five goals and he gave like five or six assists last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His numbers say, were amazing. Now, now, okay, one is more flesh than the other, but the technique, the the ability is still there. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. One person can start doing long shots from from, from outside the box as Colpani has done it three times this season. But he's also got nice. the IQ, man. You know, he's a very intelligent Sorry, player. Say, but Churia has also been has the IQ yeah, to give yeah, those yeah. passes and get those goals. So just because someone scores more flashy goals, the IQ is still there. But it's not only about the flashiness. It's it's the I think ability it to pull off certain moves in certain situations, which is flashy, and they're is very it, nice goals. It might be versatile more than flashy. Versatile if I see him playing more the ability to try get a ball and give it to another player who then gets the goal. He's more of a goal scorer. No, nah, no, nah, he played Colombo through at one point. He crossed it out with his outstep. It was a fucking brilliant. Sure. He's always showing us more of what he can do, this guy, man. That, that's what's exciting me. Every I, game, I'm like, I had no idea he could do that. I would wait. I agree with you. I think he's, he's, he's looking like a really exciting prospect. Someone you can, you know, you can enjoy for years to come. Yeah. But I would just hold up a bit because I just have this feeling that at Monza, there's this, I don't know how, how, um, how, Gal what's, what's his, Gagliardini, Gagliardini, um, plays, but, um, uh, he, <laughs> I think, I just have this theory that he, he, he really focuses on a player that year and he really tries to hype them ah, wait, and build like them. Like Paladino, wait, Paladino, you're saying Paladino, okay, Paladino. I, say, um, I don't know why, I don't want to Gagliardini. <laughs> um, that's, I, that's just what I think. Yeah. I could be wrong. Maybe he does focus his system around one man, but Colpani is definitely showing that he's up to the task. I can't wait to talk about him more later on. Yes, sir. <laughs> Number 10, the final game we'll be discussing eventually is Genoa 1, Hellas Verona 0, where Dragusin scored that wonderful goal. But let's get into it with Lazio Roma. Sure. For me, uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I wanted to see a goal over here. When I looked at the lineup, you know, granted, maybe they're not the strongest teams in the world. But the Lazio side did feature Luis Alberto, Pedro, Immobile, you know. Um, Immobile while... came on second half, right? No, no, he started the game. Did He's... he? Yeah, he started the game. He played a full game then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Roma, on the other hand, Lukaku, Dybala, you know. Um, so, so you expect to see some, some, some goals, man. The players, the players' quality was there. Yeah, yeah. In in the four in the. Attacking departments, I think it was mostly there. Like these players are, I don't know, I, are top I, I, in their position. I would rate Mancini's Mancini as a defender quite highly. Ah, yes, not not. And the likes of the goalkeepers involved. Mm. I think I think like for like I'm the, not a big fan of Rui Patricio, despite him playing well this game. I I don't think. He's I think I think he had a bad start, but I don't think it's fair to say that he's he's washed. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. He had a very bad start, don't get me wrong. But as the games go on, you can see that he's called... He, he, it's, just, it's just with life. Sometimes you have, you have a lack of confidence and it shows. Yeah, and yeah. when you're a keeper like that in a team like Roma, it it shows way more. Yeah. It shows way more. I can have a dud and play for Frosinone, but it's almost expected. I can't be expected to have a bad game when I play for Roma. That's because true. all eyes are on you. Yeah, yeah. Especially a keeper of his caliber. I, I, I think... I think maybe maybe long term, maybe the next two years, they should start thinking about a, a replacement keeper. But I think he said has two good years in him. I think it depends on what becomes available in the market because there are some goalkeepers right now who would be an absolute bargain to get. Like, to be honest, if they would if they would be able to snatch the Gregorio, yeah, for example, he would definitely have a run for his money next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. But but again, that's 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 what I'm talking about. If, yeah. they, if they're able to snatch a good replacement the next few years. Then, then reproduction might have a bit of issues. Yeah. Um, it it very much depends. I I don't think if next year you start the squad with reproduction on goal, you're gonna be like, oh god, I have a I have a liability there. Mm, okay. That's my opinion okay. at least. Personally, I think that he he often mannequin challenges. You know, where he doesn't quite move or track the ball. It happens sometimes. I feel um, it's happening less and less as the yeah, season it's goes true, on. Yeah, it's true. He's growing into so, the season. So, but last year, I think it was a disaster, personally. Yeah, you know, n- yeah. players don't have bad seasons. Of course, Onana yeah. had a fucking yeah. terrible start to this year, and he's know, recovering. He's recovering. He won. He won a game in the Champions League to give United at least a fighting chance. Arguably, they lost to the next. Well, next didn't Maguire win that game. Both both played well. Yeah, yeah. One one saved the penalty and one scored a goal. So you know they both deserve their they both deserve their dues. Um, but but more about the game of Rama to not to not um, go off go off on too much of a tangent. Um, I feel as though I'll actually have some critique about Lukaku. <gasps> Can you believe it? Oh my God, um, I just I just don't think he's a big game player. Mm. I don't, I, I, That's a very interesting. I point. think I think he's a great player to have in your team. I think he's a, I think he's he's a he's a professional mm-hmm. no matter where he goes. He's a great player to have in your squad when it's not a big game. What do you think it is about big games that puts him off? I feel as though he's easy to if you study him well, he's easy to sort of to sort of um, figure out a way to contain him. Mm-hmm. He has, he has no longer the pace. The absolute speed to to sort of um, you know beat his man and start going on a front go mm. go for and go on a counter attack and score a goal. To like turn on the halfway line and just destroy everyone. He'll be able to turn and keep yeah, the ball, but yeah. he has to give it to someone. He has to give it to the likes of Debala, to the mm. likes of Spinazzolo, who had a very good game this season. This 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 um this yeah, game. Yeah, he played very well. Um, but on his own, he's 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 he doesn't have enough mm. anymore. Again, he's great in the box. Lukaku, I think he still shows at, a, at his age, at 30, he's able, if you give him a chance, he's going to score. But I think I think in those games, Mourinho doesn't have many options. So the, the game plan is still built around Lukaku. Mm-hmm. And and I think if you if you prep your defenders well enough, if you prep what he's going to do, if you prep your attackers in a way that Lukaku is going to do these certain, these certain moves, which Lukaku does, Tries to muscle you off the ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. turns quickly and has a great shot. Honestly, double teaming him sometimes is all it takes. So yeah, this this double man marking mm-hmm. and just basically suffocating him quickly yeah. will will kind of will kind of hopefully, of course, because you never know. He could, he has the talent to, to to dribble a player and score a goal. He's he's seen it this year. Yeah. Or or he might be strong enough to out muscle you. But in these games, I think I think they tend teams of that caliber tend to have defenders who can match that physicality. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, so in my opinion, this is where where my only critique of Lukaku is. Yes, Lukaku used to destroy Romagnoli constantly in the Milan derby back when he was uh, at the form of his life. I think Romagnoli is a better player at Lazio. Yeah, he he totally is one hundred percent. Romagnoli used to do this thing where he would try to almost he'd, he'd give Lukaku a yard or two. And you should never do that, especially when he was at you his can't. best. Like you, you can't, can't you cannot. He'll you can't. just run at you, and, and he'll just keep going. Like you can't. You have to fucking press him. And and I think he dealt with him very well this game. And and this is Lukaku's second vanishing act. Could in the it big be game. difference of coach as well? Difference of coach, perhaps. Ooh. Yes, could also be the case. Um, but Lukaku against Inter, for example, you know, uh, I think he vanished. The whistles, huh? it's the whistles, man. The, he vanished more in this game. Than, than in the Inter game. In the Inter game, bro, he hardly... Mark, can you blame the Inter the game? The whistles are way too the, much. The Inter game was something yeah, specific, yeah, of though. Of course, of course. I think in this game, 
where the quality is less on the Lazio side and you still and you vanish even more mm. now, you kind of almost expect it against Inter again it's not something I sh- you should be you, you should be expecting at all from a player mm-hmm. of his of his caliber but Inter are the best team right now in this moment in the league so so if you have a dud against Inter you're not like absolutely shocked yeah 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 you know yeah. when you have a dud against Lazio who are lower in the table than you and have been shaky er overall and where where if you remove Luis Alberto from that squad the team has really really regressed regressed they have no ammunition yeah then then you know then you start to question a bit more i think yeah these are the games where he should still be showing up and in, in the likes of 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 Milan or or Inter or Juventus you shouldn't be doing that anyways you should find a way to figure it out Yeah. But in the likes of Lazio, the Fiorentinas, the 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 even Napoli to a certain sex to a, to a certain extent, these are the games where you should still be showing up a bit. Yes. But um but he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Again, this is no this is no um disrespect to him. You guys know I love him as a player. I think he's solid, but he's just not he's just not a big I game think player. He, he suffered many strikers have this thing where they, they suffer with I think it's confidence. A, I think it's sens- an Italian thing. Sensitivity, not not necessarily, because you remember he go in in the latter stages, big moments were in, too in, much in, for in, him. In Italy, though, but even in the World Cup final, for example, was it the I World th- Cup? I final? think I think the world. I think World Cups are a totally different mm. thing. I think I think I think they're so they're so foreign to football almost. Yeah, it's because a, there's so much. It's pressure. an isolated event. I, I think that it's yeah. too isolated to even yeah. compare them. Yeah. It's so different almost, even the way you play football. So you can't concede. You can't concede in the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's too demoralizing. When as a team, I can't remember at least when when you when you go when you in a, at least in a final when you concede and you somehow get a comeback. It's very oh, yeah, it's, it's very true, rare. It's, true, it's, it's very rare. It happens, it's, but it's very 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 rare. And the last World Cup final was crazy. Fucking it was insane. Hat-tricks. It was two insane. I, it oh was something. It, it was that's that's not a that's not a normal final. Yeah, yeah. that's why we were so lucky. It was yeah, such it was such an abnormal final. Two teams led by two aliens, like two aliens of the game. Usually, someone scores, yeah. the other team tries, and it says the other team defending. Yeah. It was it was insane. It was a lovely final. Yeah, I, we, I think we were. We I think were, I watched it again today. <laughs> it's been a while. Like, I only watched it the one time. I, I me think too. Great to I, me too. Again. I don't usually replay football matches, but sometimes they are. Sometimes. They, they are sometimes nice to do. Yeah. Um, Matt and I had watched the nil nil Juve Milan Champions League final, and that was a fucking crazy nil nil game, man. Because Milan were all over Juve mm. the entire game, and Juve were like, it's like Allegri was their coach back then. Still, you know the way they were, they remained in the game. Conte Juve, came on and almost turned the game Juve around. Impressed me, man. You've impressed me in the way that they are so they are so mature in how to deal with oh, yeah. pressure. Oh, yeah. It's it's like. Honestly, it's. I wish it was a quality I had as a person. Yeah. How to t- take all this pressure, take all these punches, take all this, this, this force. You know what it is, and bro. somehow reflect it, man. It's impressive. It huh? is. It is totally impressive. Um, you can I hate them as I don't like you as a club, it's but it's impressive as fuck. Every time Juve make a mistake, Allegri removes an item of clothing. <laughs> so they're only allowed in theory to make about four mistakes before he's, before he's naked. Right? <laughs> I don't think so, anyone so no will see that. Naked. Exactly. So the second he takes off his blazer, takes off his tie, unbuttons the top button, they're like, all right, no more mistakes. Like, <laughs> holy shit, dude! That was brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, this this derby, I think the first half was really exciting. Was kind of disappointed by the second. I really noticed the momentum shift in the first half. F- first 15 minutes were all Roma. Yes. There was a goal by Cristante, which was ruled out for offside. The yeah. next 15 minutes were all lots. You were Luis Alberto as well. Took a fucking remarkable shot from outside the, post, the box at the post. Honestly, bro. Yeah, I think it was all Lazio from from after the first fifteen minutes. Though. Yeah, and then they remained on. And top. And then they to remained honest, on top, yeah. and they really should have scored, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Totally, it was. It had the the spirit of a derby as there it were did. seven yellow cards in the game. Um, both teams did struggle to make the most of their opportunities, but overall, yes, I thought it was pay- played at a little bit of a low pace. Um, and I looked at the statistics of the of match day twelve, and um, Roma were bottom tier 
in this match day in all in pretty much every department. Um, they had the least distance covered of all teams this match. Did they were tired from from uh, from Europe from uh, Europa or Conference League? Europa. I think, uh, they, were tired, I think they were they were tired from Europa League. To be honest, it could be. It could be. Um, they were bottom four in key passes, bottom two in goal scoring chances created. I can't help but feel like there's a lot of pressure on Dybala to link. All so, those men to Lukaku, so essentially. He, had a bit of that, that. he was. He so had a bit of a bad, that, that of a season, game. I mean. Ah, yeah. I mean, with the ball, it's always the same. You never know what you're gonna get. He's either gonna. It's a real pity, man. Yeah. I really, I really like him as a player. I think he's it's... just too inconsistent, uh, especially physically. He can't quite keep up with it sometimes, man. So it's a shame when the, their body doesn't quite let them do what I they mean, want. Bro, well, unfortunately, I think with sports, you just have to have the physical. Mm-hmm. Uh, you either have to be small enough. And and quick enough to just avoid avoid um, the brunt of tackles, or you just have to be strong enough to take them. Yeah, yeah. you know, th- 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 there's no in between. You take a crunching tackle, you're gonna feel it. You're yeah, gonna yeah. get injured, man. You take a look at, for example, Ruben Loftus Cheek against PSG, man, and, and and it explains a lot, like why the player experiences so many physical issues. His game is all about physical contact, man. You you watch this guy; the second he gains momentum. Players hit him and bounce right off him. The only way to stop Ruben Loftus Cheek when he hits full stride, like, is by by taking him out, dude. He kicks yeah. his legs, like, and and that explains a lot. You know, the the play style of the player affects a lot, like, the, yes. like the ball. Like, you have to go in hard on the ball, and I'm you sure know. that. That's and I think that, that 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 puts him off later on in the game. It makes him scared. Of course, of course. When it comes to the league table, Roma find themselves in seventh with eighteen points. While Lazio find themselves in tenth with seventeen points, that's a slow start huh, for the Roman teams. Um, it's a slow start. However, I do believe as the season progresses, at least for the likes of Roma, because I think they have a more complete squad. You will see them pick up. They'll grow into it, and right? they are growing into it. Yeah. To be honest, they're not losing many games. That's true. So, so you can critique them as much as you want, and you can if you want. Maybe it's not the type of football you want to see, but Mourinho still. Gains results And you can critique him As much as you want You can say he plays shit football You can say it's too defensive You can say they don't make enough chances All very true But they are Relatively consistent Yeah yeah. Uh, so what do you want in a football You know honestly As a, as a player We're going to go just for two seconds To the Premier League please. You can say as much as you want uh, It's nice to play good football But if I fucking lose half my games Yeah What the fuck's the point Of course yes but, What the fuck's the point But in theory Roma have won five. Yes. They've lost four and they've drawn three. And that's not playing nice games. That's playing... That's a, an, This is all with an attempt of playing a pragmatic game where they take advantage of situations, try to win 1-0, you know, defend leads, not yes. create chances, try to exhaust the team mentally and take advantage of a lapse in concentration. That's their entire approach. And it can get exhausting for fans when it doesn't go their way. It's easy to turn on Mourinho. It's easy to turn on them, mm-hmm. but can you can we all agree that their team isn't fantastic? I know, I think everyone They barely have a top they have barely have a starting eleven, in yes. my opinion. Barely, man. It's it's a rehabilitation center at the end of the day. You look at players like Renato Sanchez, you look at players like Dybala, you look at players like Lukaku. These are all players who need to kind of rediscover themselves in their career. And Rome is a place where they're trying to do it. And uh, unfortunately for these players, Mourinho doesn't really allow for the most creative and expressive brand of football. Um, I think Dybala is an exception here because he can... In reality, do what he wants, but he I doesn't think, quite have the support that he that would make him thrive. He doesn't really have. The I, w- I would wait a bit, man. The way Spinazzola played this game, I think he might be looking like he's slowly coming to the to, to the old stages of his career. It's always like this with Spinazzola, man. Wait three match days and he'll be injured. Let's let, let's see. I think I, I think I think if he if he's able to stay fit, he might be a key catalyst because when you have mm. Spinazzola, Dybala in the team with Lukaku then you have a good chance to then create quite a big trident up front mm-hmm. to deal with for yeah. any club. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I agree with you. I, I think your points overall do make sense. I agree why people can get frustrated. But at the same time, as a, I don't know. I, I feel it's also... Yeah. I feel it's also a bit harsh as well at the same time. Two managers who are totally under fire right now, Sarri and Mourinho. Um, they for, are, yes. And they play a total opposite brand of football, so oh, it's yes. interesting to see, man. You know, like like Lazio do play nice football and they do try to connect that like defence to attack, mm-hmm. swift movements, passing patterns and all that. 
Um, but it, and it does nothing. It does nothing. Man. <laughs> Nowadays it's doing that, but it doesn't help that they they're constantly replacing those midfielders every year. And they're constantly sorry, they're constantly making, constantly really making bad buys. Yeah. Like the thing is, I like I like the Guendouzi purchase. I think he's been good. Oh, it's the Guendouzi, the blood bro. I like him with Alberto. His accent's a bad buy, in my opinion. His accent, yes, isn't a great buy. Um, Cataldi, man, I, I think, for example, why, why haven't they bought Vecino's a replacement? Vecino is a bad buy. Vecino is a bad buy. However, he does show up in big moments to to almost convince you otherwise. Oh, that, that, that's seen, Those are isolated. That seems very shallowly. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. Um, so Overall, in the grand scheme of things, he's not a he's not a player to build the system player, around. He's not a player for a lot. So. Like they need like Max Maxime Lopez, man, in that midfield. They need like a they, a Benacer type. They need type, energy. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, last year need energy, which they don't have. They barely have energy up front. They have Immobile, who looks like he's half broken. Pedro on the other Pedro's side. Pedro's also half broken. And then Philip Anderson, like an Olympic sprinter, misking, trying to trying to make up for everyone. I, I, I feel I feel they made a mistake in the sense that they realized that immobile and we can maybe we can end this and move on. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we, we spoke quite a bit on, on Yeah. Um I feel like they really focused on finding an immobile replacement to make him feel like he needs his he needs competition. To make him feel like, listen, you are our legend, but you keep this up and we're, we're going to find a replacement for you. And they didn't realize that if Zakania and Philippe Anderson don't perform game in, game out, they also have an issue. Yeah. So they, 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 they tunnel vision on strike. Oh, we need a striker. Mm-hmm. And they found Castellanos. You like him? I'm not particularly impressed. We'll yeah. see. I can be wrong, as I have yeah. been many times. But they then hoped and prayed almost that the, the, the two wingers will be consistent for the whole year. And they're yeah. not being. Not at all. Zakani's had an awful start. So, so I mean... And I almost prefer them with Philip Anderson as the false nine. I almost do, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they play better. I, I don't like when Philip is on the wing. I don't know yeah. why. I don't know why. I don't know how he changes so much in his, his game style, but he feels like a different player. It's true, it's true, totally. But yes, we will move on now to Inter to Frosinone at nil. This was... Frosinone putting up a noble fight over here, trying to stop Inter, but of course could not stop the inevitable force yeah. that was Di Marco from 56 meters out. And um, Thuram making the most of a player who had slid. And I think I think it was a really good play from Thuram. It was very smart. That, that's that's how you win a penalty. That's man. how you win a penalty. And, the, and there could be no doubt about like the the referee didn't even need more than four yeah. seconds to yeah. decide that that's a clear penalty. The, the play the defender slid early and Thuram just ran into his legs. He ran into his legs, man. Yeah. You're gonna do it, eh? I mean, it, it's cheap. Yes, it's cheap. But I mean. <laughs> You're a striker. You have to. You either you're either gonna you're either gonna slip into his legs or fall into his legs, sorry, mm-hmm. or you're just gonna take a crack on goal. Now what's, what 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 better chance do you have to score? At the moment, you probably have a better chance with Karl Hanoglu striking a penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Karl Hanoglu hasn't missed a single penalty since he's and gone the to penalties have been so so good, really. bloody good, yeah. man. <sighs> you want to hear a stat? Go so he scored ten out of ten penalties in Italy, mm-hmm. and he's also become the highest ever scoring Turkish international in Serie A history. Congrats to Kahan Ogdeman. Okay. He is stepping up this year. Well yeah. done to him. I don't like the way you say his name. What should I say, man? Charles Noglu. Charles Noglu. Yeah, Filio di Putin. No, man. Kahan no. Oglu. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kahan Oglu. <laughs> Um, for Inter's lineup, it was Bastonia, Cherby, and Darmian at the back. Um, Darmian has just been, for me, one of the most consistent. Un- consistent, unsung players since his return to Inter. He's been, he's been f- fucking good, man. Honestly, like, like almost flawless. And even with the Italian national team, he's been good too. Bastoni has fallen injured since, so Inter are probably gonna have to deploy Bissek in the coming days. So we'll see how that goes because they have Pavard injured too. Yeah, now the injuries are picking up again. They are. They are. And Inter aren't used to having many injuries at the same time. No. They've been quite lucky They've been in the lo- past they few were, seasons. I'm very... Uh, uh, I'll agree with you. Mm-hmm. Totally. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it is uh, yeah. deals with that. Because you look around, you look at Juve, Milan, you look at the likes of everyone, man. Everyone suffers terrible injuries and at the same time, these crises, except for Inter, who... Tend to keep everyone fit. Now, I don't know if that's a whole thing with their advanced medical staff or could their be. coaching ideology. Could be. Could be. They yeah. don't want to be too rough in, too rough in training. It could be as well the fact that like Milan play a very pressing brand of football. High intensity press. Like the Gagan press. Your muscles, your muscles give yeah, in, man. They give in totally. Of man. course. You need to rotate of aggressively course. to do that. Of like course. Atalanta used to. Sure. Yeah. Oh, Gasperini at Milan. Oh, my God. That would be... That would 
I would, I would, I would actually be very interested to watch Milan game in, game out. But can can you imagine Gasperini? Like it's half time and he just takes out like Theo, Leao, and like. I but those know. are the balls you need yeah, to do, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 act as if, as that's a critique. That's no. that, that was the kind. Of, if if a player isn't performing, okay, yes, you can give him a shot in the second half. You can shout at him in 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 half time and tell him what the fuck are you doing, man the fuck up and do something. But sometimes the only response is to get subbed off. Go mm-hmm. be a baby on the on the on the bench. Go cry to your teammates. Oh, the coach subbed me off, and next time go to training and prove me wrong. Perhaps I'm, I I might be a little bit I might be wrong here I don't know but um I think Gasprini is too old to be hired by Milan I don't think they would go for a profile like that I think they would they're, they're more into these modern profiles of course so totally the opposite man I just I just always prioritize as experience man there there are going to be games where you just need that street smart that experience that edge over an opponent where usually it's only coming from an older older coach who knows the game. And he'll just he'll just you know he'll just find he'll just find ways to create a system that will potentially fuck you in the game, yeah. and you'll win then based off that. And Gasparini many times has created those situations where he has won. Yeah, and the with, a, with is, a lesser squad. Look, what Gasparini's done is absolutely incredible with a team like Atalanta, who have one of the lowest budgets in European football. As when you look at the the Europa League. Where they play the top of their group, they they don't have a wage bill that's that's high enough for them to be top of the group and still competing for a top four spot in Serie. Yeah. But Gasperini is making that happen with all the tools at hand, and Atalanta's whole system is fantastic. The way they operate, um, I I just think that like Milan need to if they're gonna move away from Pioli, not saying they should, but if they if they will move away from Pioli. I think they have to do whatever it takes to, get to bring team. in De Zerbi, man. Because De Zerbi is, I don't know, man. He's got fucking balls. He's got, he's got that fucking type of football that like takes you off your seat. Like he, I think with the with the squad that Milan have, De Zerbi might be a fucking good fit, man. Maybe, maybe I'm not sure. No, we'll see. Yeah, maybe it's a similar style. Too. Maybe, but anyway, um, Inter back to Inter Frosinone. So they're they're first still. They've got plus two on Juve. Yes. Um, at the moment, who impresses you more when you flick on the TV and mm-hmm. you watch a Juve game and you watch an Inter game? Impress who looks in what, better? Impress in what way, though? Like, which team do you think like this team is unbeatable? This team is is difficult to get a point from. I I guess it has to be it has to be Juve frustratingly enough. It has to be Juve. Yeah, yeah. They killed the game. Perfect. They killed. Yeah. They, they, there's this way we'll speak about them later. Inter are more enjoyable to watch. Mm. You can be a neutral. You can flick on the television and you can watch Inter. Say, oh, this is an interesting game. They play. They play nice, aggressive, counter-attacking football. It's nice to watch. Juve don't do that. But then you were more frustrating to beat. Yeah, yeah, totally, 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 man. They're so difficult to score against, and they'll, they'll get a one 0 lead, and they just hold on to it, and you can't do anything about it. Inter, towards the end of the game, especially the last the last ten minutes, there's always a way back in, be it for Frosinone, be it for for anyone. Like there's always that little those chances you get at the end, you can get back into the game. Could it be an argument that still Allegri? Knows the squad better than than Inzaghi. That yes, is, I'm sure. So Inzaghi is still growing. For longer. Inzaghi is growing into the role still, growing into the team still. He still has new players. It could be, it could be, and this is also Allegri's entire brand. Yes, it's his area of expertise. Yes. doing this, yeah, pragmatism. Um, yes, uh, for me, despite like being the underdogs, I thought Frosinone put in a noble display. They tried. I mean, it was to be expected that they lose, but they did. They did present. I like. Shift. I really appreciate that they attack anyone. Like they don't they'll care who they're up against. They'll they're going to attack in numbers. Like. I agree. I, I like that kind of football. Yeah. Don't be scared. You go and you give your best shot. Yeah. They increase the pressure. Mm-hmm. They try to pile the pressure when they were in possession. They try to disrupt Inter's passing lanes. They try to force them into mistakes and pre- preventing them from getting the ball forward. They attack the numbers. They they try to exploit the gaps left when DiMarco and Dumfries advanced. 
they they had high intensity counter attacks with quick breaks and they they pressed very aggressively as well. I, I think Frosinone were were very put in a very respectable performance this game and they have in every game to be honest this season and 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 they're quite versatile tactically as well. Like they lined up with a four a three four two one this game. You know like we haven't really seen that this season at all. Three at the back for Frosinone. So yeah, really appreciate that by them. Um, but yes, Inter on the other one too much. DiMarco's goal, absolutely fantastic. Thuram winning that penalty, very clever. Chalanoglu flawless from the spot. I don't know if there's anything else you want to mention from this game. I think I think we've covered. I think that you know Inter again managed to 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 get to win these games that last year they struggled with. Mm-hmm. Last, year, the, the, last year there were certain games where you expect to win and somehow they come draw, or they lose, and Inzaghi is managing to find a way where they actually win. Um, again, different team. Martinez is playing more. Con- he had a, yeah, maybe the one time you can say Martinez, Martinez had a bad game. This this game. Yeah, he was very frustrated. Despite the win at the end, he was he so wanted, frustrated. He wanted goals. His is, mentality is next level. Um, you know, Turan's playing quite well, although he's not scoring the amount of goals he should be scoring. Argument to be made, argument to be not, but he's playing as a team player, which you always like to see. Um, you know, the likes of their 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 um, defense is still solid. The Marcos playing well. Um, so, you know, with that being said, usually you expect them to win. Last mm-hmm. season, they had duds. They, had, yeah. they, they would miss fire. And now you're seeing much more consistent, a much more consistent Inter. Um, so, so I think overall, we can end with that. I think that, you yeah. know, Inter again proved that they're managing to overcome their um, inconsistencies. They are not as, as consistent as Juve. However, they are building up this, 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 this um, run of form that no matter who they face, what I'm liking about Inter, and I think I think maybe it's it's it it could be the key the key to them winning the league is that no matter who they're playing, they're playing their game, mm-hmm. and yeah. they're not playing an altered system. They say we play the same formation. We're playing our three at the back, our five in the middle, our two up front. We have a relatively healthy squad. Luckily, yeah. Well, luckily, let's say luckily. Maybe yeah. it is luck. You need luck in life. Yeah. Um. And we play our system. We play our counter-attacking football. We absorb the pressure. And we come up at one go. And we try and get a goal. And they are managing. They are. Game absolutely. in, game out. Yes. Do you know what the next game for Inter is? Uh, I'm not aware. The next game on Sunday after the international break is Inter against Juve. Oh, shit, son. You are very welcome to come to my humble abode I to enjoy this game I together. Would, I would very much enjoy it with you. It is going to be a great game and it's going to be very telling. And Bissek is going to probably have to start this game at the back for Inter. So we'll are we, see. Are we, are we going to see a Pellegrino type debut? That is. <laughs> perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> it's, or, or a Musa right back type of game. We'll, we'll, right see, we'll get into game. that very Mr. soon. Mr. Florenzi Gambler. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a good game. That's it going will. to be great and it's going to be very telling to it see. Will. Um, who, who, where these teams currently stand when they face off against each other? They are currently top two with two points um, between great, themselves. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's great. So the next game we're going to be discussing is Lecce two, Milan two. Now, can I just set the scene for this game? Right, I had a wedding this day. A wedding, you know. Congratulations, Tom and Christina. Right. Um, I was watching the game, which, by the way, I was going. I was meant to miss because Sarah was meant to have been done, and we were meant to leave when the game started. However, I came home to find Sarah asleep on the sofa. Nice. Always a good sign. Yes. And I realized, you know what? I'm going to let her sleep. Because if she <laughs> sleeps, I'll get to watch the first half. <laughs> so I let her sleep and I woke up. Oh my God, babe, you're late. You're running late. Like you have to go get ready. Okay. She's getting ready. And I'm in my suit watching Milan from the start. Right. And the first half is brilliant. Milan look amazing. It's champagne football goals. Got a Giroud scores on his 100th game for Milan. It's going for Ryan, um, Reinders finally scored, gets a goal. Scored a terrible goal. Scored a terrible goal. I just fucking think that guy should pass, but purely apparently he's putting pressure on him to, to, to get more, to get his numbers up. But I'm thinking to myself, Milan have this in the bag. Eventually the second half, I'm watching the second half. Sarah's not done yet. Of course, she's still doing her makeup. And then she's like, babe, can you book the taxi? I'm like, sure, I'll book the taxi. I book the taxi. Taxi's here. Put on my shoes. Call the lift. Go down. Call the taxi again. Hello, like this is me. Get in the taxi, get into the back, pull up a stream of, on my phone, and it's two two. And I'm thinking to myself, how the fuck has it been five minutes? 
<laughs> and let you have equalized. Like, and, peop- <laughs> and people say the shit doesn't affect it. Like, like when someone comes in the room and someone scores, they say, oh, that's just a coincidence. It's not a coincidence, man. No. It's not, man. It's not. There has to be something cosmic about you it. Think, uh, you think... That I think if I hadn't left my living room, Milan would have won that game. They would have won 4-0. For sure, bro. Oh, Honestly. I, for think, sure. I think you're totally the right. The second bro. I got in that lift, I <laughs> fucked everything, man. All right? And that, that's just my... Jake, it's your fault, they lost. It's my fault. Completely. Shame on you, man. Yes. And then when we were at the wedding... A friend of mine who supports Inter came up to me and said, Tre due, tre due, Pete Bayada. Let's... It was 3-2. Can we speak about that? Can we speak about that? Sure, let's speak Can we about speak about so, that? So, the goals... Soft. I agree. No, no, no. no. I think... <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm shocked. You're shocked. There's I... no way it's a foul. The Chao one. There was a bit of a stomp. And he twisted his nipple a little bit. I don't even know if this okay, happened. So, what, so what, we can't touch players anymore? <laughs> no, I know. It was extremely soft, extremely harsh, and they must feel hard done by. Um, was it the penalty? Controversial. N- nothing, sir. It was the foul. Yes. I, I, dude, I don't think it's controversial, honestly. I think it's just not a foul. Mm. I, I know you hate, hate denying it. No, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm all for speaking the truth, man. I agree, but I, I I just can't see it. I just I can't see it's a foul. I mean, I, I was shocked. I was like, yeah. okay, yes, there's a bit of a storm. There's a bit of a push and a grab, grab of his t-shirt. Mm. You know what to do. Some might look at that and think the game's gone. But if you literally had to look at the rule book and look at that and look at those images from VAR, slow down especially, it looks worse than it is. You know, that's the problem, I think. When you slow it down... You get it, it looks so bad, man. It, but I, I saw I saw the replay. It, is, it doesn't look like the, the top isn't even being pulled that much. Yeah. It's barely it's being 50 50. It's right? barely yeah. being pulled. Yeah, I don't know, man. It was For, weird. I, I can't, and, and, I wouldn't and, and give Thiao, Lecce fans. And, Thao, Thao, Chao, 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 like Chao he, Bella. You, <laughs> he also makes it extremely flamboyant. His, of course, his, yes. his, him, him being hurt and. Like you're six four, bro. I mean, I, I for me, I as a person, I just, I just, I find it, I just really struggle to take it seriously. Yes. I can't help but feel that maybe lecture. If if lecture were to feel robbed, if lecture fans were to feel robbed, I wouldn't blame them. Let's just say that. Fair. Okay. Um, Sansone. Sansone, listen to this. Has scored seven goals against Mila. Insane. Okay. Huh? Yes. Um, and these goals were for four different clubs. Only one man has scored against Milan, representing more clubs than Sansona has, and it's Chiesa's father, Enrico Chiesa. Holy shit! Yeah, so that's that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Like, what is it about Sansona? I think you score once, you score twice, you start believing. You know what? I'm always going to score against these guys, and and it's just mind a, a over belief, matter. A man. belief system. Yes, it's a belief system totally. But I need to say, man, that Milan being two 0 up. They weren't playing like they were tuning up. No. They, they were going into when they're playing the game like a basketball game. Just attacking constantly. Like control the tempo a little bit. Slow it down. You have a 2 nil advantage. I don't, I, I don't think they trust the defense, dude. But the defense has been commendable, man. The defense has been all right. Like, Chao and Tomori have formed a pretty good partnership and Calabria has been fine. You know what the thing is, man? Calabria went off injured. And Pioli decided to put Musa as the right back. He made one mistake... And it's 2-1. He made another mistake. And it's 2-2. And then he took him out and brought on Florenzi. Like, why are you... That, you was, that was weird. That's weird. Like, you're going to wait until the game's fucking... To be honest, to be honest, after you see two glaring mistakes. Yeah. I think he had, like, Pellegrino fears. <laughs> yeah. I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, that that decision was super out of this, out of the ordinary. I think he was fearing the, lo- the loss of the game then. And, yes. and purely, is an, a purely is but also you should fear the equaliser, man, as well. Not just the loss of the game. You have a natural right back who represents Italy on the bench. You're gonna fucking play Musa as right back. Bring him on. Why not? I don't get it. I can't understand it. There must be a reason that ah. he, Musa must be playing better in training, man. Maybe you don't, you maybe don't make, he doesn't gamble. You don't make decisions. You don't make decisions. Maybe maybe you need the experience. You're right. Maybe you need someone who's experienced. I don't get it. I don't get it, honestly. They they took advantage of of a player playing in a new role in a new league on his like fucking he hasn't even started ten games for Milan. He was put on as a right back. And yeah. they took absolute advantage of it. Not yeah. to mention that the set piece goal conceded by Milan 
this is like uh, like the antithesis what's the antithesis yeah, antithesis, antithesis yeah. yeah of um of you and inter at the moment like when it comes to defending set pieces milan have not figured it out they had improved for a while but this in one week they conceded the exact same goal twice corner flick onto the far post goal they conceded against psg and they conceded against lecture over here with sansona um Set pieces need work, man. Defen- defensively, and 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 it's always been an issue. I th- I think I think the team was tired again, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. They gave a lot. They gave a lot against PSG. That's what and I'm that saying, was man. a fantastic. And I, I I had a feeling, fantasy related. I had a feeling. What if I play Lecce? Because I had I had this feeling actually Lecce might win. Wow. Because I just thought that Milan gave so much in that game. There's no way physically. You have enough energy to come up against a team like Lecce, who aren't too shabby this season, and be able to perform the same at the same level. The thing is, they had, they started the game so well, Milan. Sure, bro. They 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 got a, they got an advantage, and it. But tired, killing tired the game. This comes in, Jake. Yes, dude. yes, but but you look at the players here. Half of them didn't even feature. Not half of them. Didn't feature, oh. Okay, but but we have Kron- you Okay, so you started with Krunic, Pobega, and Chukwueze, who didn't even play against against PSG. Sure, you right? have three guys. Yes. Okay, three guys. But that's a midfield double pivot. Sure. And and you managed to get a two 0 lead. Yes. Can't you maintain that? Like you don't you have the fucking. But there, that's three players, dude. Not the whole yes, squad. Right. Leo yeah, went Giro, off Giro, yes. Giro got in. Giro was tired for sure. Leo got injured, which fucks you, which fucks you royally. Rainier's was also, I'm pretty sure, tired. Yes. I mean, that, that's already three players out of out of six offensive players who are tired. You have also the defense, who also gave a lot in that game, who are also equally tired. Yes, that game took a lot out of the Milan players, man. I, I, that PSG game. I don't, was, I don't, intense, don't label so. it as an excuse, but yeah. but these, this is this is why this is why the Champions League is difficult because you need a depth, you need depth in your squad, mm. and if you don't have it, and and, and you're, you're injury su- crisis, and you right. succumb to and you succumb to injuries, I think it's then very easy to just blame the coach. Yeah. In my opinion, look, I, I. I there, there are areas where Pioli needs to be criticised, and it's as simple as that. It's evident that there are certain games, particularly his in-game management. His approach from the get-go isn't always bad. It's, it's, it's actually usually very good. But it's the fact that he doesn't fucking adapt to the game. The changes he makes are, are so questionable at times. Against Juve, again, I, I've been saying this, Madonna, like, you go a man down against Juve, you take out Pulisic, who's running like a madman, and leave Giroud on, who's 37 years old. You're a man down. You want the experience. You want you want that lucky cross, man. Yes, you, you, you want that lucky sure, cross. Sure, sure, sure. But you also need to think about the fact that you need energy if you're ten men. You know, you need energy. Okay, you're two 0 up against Lecture. Your captain's fallen injured at right back. You've got five substitutions. Why don't you bring on Florenzi, who's literally called up to the national team ahead of the guy who's starting in Calabria? Bring him on. What's the problem? And why would you put Musa? I I don't get it. I, think I don't he, get I, these I think experiments. He, I think you wanted that energy there. I so think Florenzi should give you energy. He's a fucking Allah athlete in his prime who barely plays. Maybe, maybe you're right. But yes. anyway, um, yeah, I get so heated when it comes to this man. I get so fucking heated. I think he needs some more moya, man. I need some more. Do I? I think that might be the problem. <laughs> 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 I'm usually very composed. You usually are, but I saw, I saw, I saw a passionate Jake. Yes, man. I'm surprised. Look at the aroused. <laughs> Yes, but I must say that that PSUG game was absolutely fantastic, and yes. this was so disappointing. Um, I I can understand. I was very happy for Banda to see him scoring. Um, very good he goal. Deserved the goal. Very good goal. Um, the shortest man in the league, standing yes. at five foot three. Great I'm goal. sure something is not so short. Yes. Second episode in a row, we mentioned that. Um, uh, we're gonna keep mentioning it. Man. We're gonna keep we're mentioning gonna let all the women know. Yeah, we're gonna let everyone know. Right? Send them, send them your DMs. Looks please. can be deceiving. Do not <laughs> judge a book by its cover, right? Yes, Banda had an uh, an unmissable oh chance in the first Lord, half that he missed. What a miss, man! But he made up for it. He must have been yes. killing himself <laughs> in half <laughs> Oh my lord! Yeah, Poor I man. think, I think, dude, Benasser is back apparently. That's that's going to be huge. I think that Milan right now have a problem with slowing down the game and controlling the tempo. I think right now, as it stands, they they seem to never know when to pass sideways. They always go direct. Ben Asser is the perfect metronome. He's brilliant at that. I think he's, he's top tier in his, in his role. I don't think there's a player better than him in Italy. Regista, as a regista. 
Um, when he's back, I think it would help Milan massively, man. Massively, massively, massively. When it comes to a Tuna lead, you can't throw a Tuna lead if Benacer is on the pitch. That's just my opinion. But yeah. We shall see. Yes. Um, as it, when it comes to the standings, Milan currently stand in third with 23 points. They've fallen behind Inter, who are first with 31. Um, whereas Lecce stand in... 14th, they've fallen, huh? They 14th won. with 14 points. Yeah, they've got zero wins in their last five games, but three draws. So the wins have stopped, but the draws have come in to replace them. The next game we're going to be discussing is Juventus 2, Cagliari 1. Juve once again found themselves temporarily in first place with another pragmatic display, piling the pressure on Inter to react. Because Juve have been playing before Inter uh, in recent times, and Inter have always had to react to jump and overtake um, Juve. Um, yeah, when it comes to the lineups, um, Keane has officially replaced Vlavic for the time being. Do you think that's uh, justifiable? I think it is. Absolutely. I, right? think, I think I think there, there's just no discussion. Yeah. I mean, because Keane's playing better. Ke- Keane at least is providing more for the team. Even if he's not scoring, he's creating those opportunities for other players. Mm-hmm. And you could see it in the first half where he laid off the ball for McKenney. Who unfortunately missed, but mm-hmm. but Vlahovic is not providing these kinds of yeah, totally these right. kinds of um, dropping the ball down and laying it off to another player. Do you think it's an issue of confidence, fitness? What do you think? I, I mindset. I think Vlahovic doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to be there. No, you think he's got his eyes on like Chelsea or something I like think, that. I think he wants to go to the Prem. Mm. I think I think he's done with it. But it, based it, on what? Why do you think this? <coughs> Sorry, I feel like. Um, I feel like he's done his time in Italy. I have I just feel like he's he's quote unquote proven himself in Italy for C. Mm-hmm. And I think that now now he feels like a move to 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 a more dynamic fo- type of football, something a bit more 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 uh, explosive, more physical, which is where I think Vlahovic um, thrives. Thrives um, f- physical in, in in the sense of intensity, because I think the physicality of defense in Italy. Is yeah, unmatched, it's unmatched it. yeah. but but the, but the tempo is, I think, something probably probably all strikers want to want to want to experience in the, in their careers. I think that Juve might have not been the right move from I the get go. I, for, I for totally Vlaovic agree because because totally. Vlaovic was the type of player, man, that, that you you play him in behind. It. And you were totally are in that team. Man. He would have been really good for Inter. He would have been. <laughs> oh my god! He, oh my god! So many teams he would have been good for. Can you imagine him at like, I don't know, man, Lazio? Imagine him at Lazio. That was a been, nine for Lazio. That would have been that would have been diabolical. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not much of a step up, right? But um, no, it's not. No, it's, a, mean, it's, it's a slight step it's, up. It's, it's move, a slight. It's, it's not a step up move. It's not Juve, you know. You no. go to Juve to step up in theory. Juve, Juve is just too prestigious yeah, to, exactly. to, to just um, ignore. Yeah. But I, I, I don't, I don't think the team. Or rather, the coach is the right one for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Because Pele, uh, because a- a- Allegri will be like, you're not performing, you're out. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. And 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 Italiano loves his babies. Yeah, you know, he likes to. And before Italiano, there was um, uh, who was Yakini. Yes. Yakini. Who, who also formed Vlahovic as yeah, well. And yeah. I, I think both of them really just. In a the different cl- way, the, totally. cl- the club, yeah. the club as well, also just cherished having Vlahovic. Mm. So they just, they just wanted to, to just basically idolize this player and keep him there, based off their love for him. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I just don't think it was the right move. Yeah, um, same here. For now, yeah, we can be we can be made wrong, but I mean, it's 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 his third season. Vlahovic in Italy or with Juve? With Juve. I believe it's his third season, yes. Yeah, so I think it's his third season, and I don't see him. He's had flashes more than anything else. Flashes where you're like, this guy in a different system would thrive. That's, that's what I can't help but feel. But yeah. I, I, I don't... It's, it, he's very hard to point, pinpoint what's the reason. What's the reason behind it? Like, what, what, is, what is causing this... Such a big lack of consistency. Yeah. Because then you see other players in that team, and they're motivated, man. They're fucking motivated. Chiesa, Chiesa, Chiesa was Keen. about to leave, and he's fucking playing like his yeah, with but, his heart in his sleeve. But there's a number of players who are there to play. Yeah, yeah. Even if they're not scoring, 
Yeah, they had to play. Of course. Kiesa yeah. missed a couple of chances. He was still playing till yeah. the end, till he got subbed off. That's what you get with Kiesa. You know what, man? This generation of Keane, Italians, even man. Even Keane, man. There are a few hard workers. I even Keane, the same thing, man. Yeah. He tried. He tried till the end. It's true. What you mentioned before about DeMarco resonates with Kiesa. Yes. Tonali. Uh, Tonali, totally. Tonali yes. granted the the betting to- scandal, yes, okay, but Tonali to lesser extent, but, but, but as but well, on yes. the pitch, yes. Tonali leaves nothing behind, bro. Yes, yes, I yes. think I think when it comes to these Italians, they play with their heart on their sleeve, man. No nonsense, no that's nonsense, yeah. and I, I I think that's a quality in football which you, re- it, I think it's often underappreciated to be honest. Yeah, and that, that's it's such an important as a sportsman, totally, it's totally. so important, man. So so important because it just changes the game, even if you're not the best player. Even if you're not like the most talented, that changes something about you. Eh? I, for example, I could never get angry when Milan had Fabio Borini playing on the left wing. I could never hate him. And every time I logged on to Twitter, when fucking Borini was playing and Milan were playing and Milan weren't doing well, Borini was always a scapegoat. Oh my God, Borini, he's so shit. What the hell are we doing with Borini playing on the wing, whatever? I could never be mad at him because that guy, man, left absolutely everything on the pitch. He would limp off after every game, like. I think it shows. I think it shows a, a lack of footballing IQ when you when when you, when you call out these players because yeah. you don't have a clue how important they are. Of course, it's 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 the same thing as these players like short a, a short side topic like Carrick or, or Hargreaves who oh yeah who, who O'Shea O'Shea, O'Shea, O'Shea back who in weren't the day. very who weren't yeah. very popular who weren't standout players but the, the shift they put in man would just suffocate the team. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, you can't just think about, oh, my player scored, therefore good. No, dude, if you're managing to tire out your opponent, if you're forcing them to focus on you, meaning that you're, you're I don't know, you're, 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 you're freaking a la Chiesa, you're, you're, you're Liao, is given space to do his thing. That's all you need to do. You're describing Isaac's success right now. Isaac's success is the least successful person in football. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. No disrespect, can't, but... <laughs> can't score an open play because from a penalty and he misses it. And Pereira was playing, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pereira must have been like, you know what, you've got this, dude. <laughs> yeah. Here's the you've vote been of, running, take it. Here's the vote of confidence. Yeah. You deserve this penalty, dude. Just don't fuck it up. I got this, boss. <laughs> Could not even get it on, on target. target. Yeah. I mean... Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Un- unlucky. unlucky. No, it's not Unlucky. Just no, what does it mean? He is, he's not a Serie A player. Yeah. But the way I look at Isaac's success is he's an athlete playing up front. He's think, not a football player. He's I think, an athlete. I think that's a fabulous yeah. way to describe it. Well done. Yeah. So we can cross Isaac's success from ever coming on the podcast. Um, yes. Juve are undefeated in games in which Manuel Locatelli wears the captain's armband this Ooh. season. Does that make a difference or is it a coincidence? I think it's just a coincidence. Coincidence, right? No, I think, nothing I, to it. I think it's just the season that they're playing. Yeah. Which is basically the, the the pragmatic no nonsense football that they're playing, like we've been saying, and I think Allegri has a way to just, you know um, mm. edge out these games. He loves edging, huh? He loves edging, bro. <laughs> he hates coming, quite frankly. Um, Juve's first half included misplaced passes out of the back, misplaced shots. They got the ball to the attack. Um, it was an opening forty-five minutes where they didn't play well at all. In fact, in the first thirty minutes. <laughs> They only recorded two <coughs> shots. I was particularly impressed by the defensive partnership of Bremer and Rogani, who scored with his phallus. Um, absolutely brilliant goal over there. I think I think it has to be the worst goal <laughs> <laughs> I've ever seen in football. <laughs> because he tries to get it in with his chest. And it hits the post. It yeah. hits the crossbar. Yeah. And then the keeper, is, Falcon is just like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, no one's going scuffet, for the ball. Scuffet. Uh, scuffet, sorry. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then, sorry, foosh, yeah, uh, no, yeah, I thought it was yeah, Lecce for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. And then he's Them just, and then he's just, he's just trying, <laughs> it could be. And then he's just, you see is trying with his hips and yeah, just, yeah. Just, <laughs> just the edge of the ball into the, into the ball, and the ball goes in so slowly yeah. as well. Like, at the point, I thought the ball was going to stop on the line. <laughs> he didn't even celebrate. <laughs> he celebrated like, guys, I've just scored the worst goal in the world. Yeah. Let's go, Juve. <laughs> Yeah, um, the only player who had a pass success rate of over 80% was Locatelli. Oh, wow, Mr. Locatelli. Kostic had as many key passes as the rest of the Juve team combined. These are some fantastic stats. I love reading them out. Um, Samuel Lilling Jr. got to play. A player who had fallen off the face of the earth. Guess where Allegri played him? As a mezzala. 
I mean, sure. Midfield. Why yeah. the hell not? I well, guess. As long as you brought him on, I guess. And um, that's a player who can really do some damage over here. As, as an impact sub, you bring him on on the wing, he can do a lot of damage. Yeah, could be. I don't know why he's not utilized as much. Um, but yeah, apparently Allegri challenged Gatti not to get a yellow card this game, so he doesn't miss the Inter game. Oh shit! And he managed. Me, I mean, fair enough. Well played. Yeah. Good job to him. Well done, cats. Well done, cats. So, yes, that is it for the Juventus game. Juventus currently sit in second with 29 points, while Cagliari sit in 18th with 9 points, just one point away from safety at the moment as things stand. Um, quite a noble display once again by Cagliari, um, but you've proved to be too pragmatic for them to crack. The next game we're going to be discussing is Napoli nil, Empoli one Ampoli put up a brilliant display and Berisha's heroics kept them in the game until the very Jesus, end uh. when Kovalenko scored a peach of a first time goal. This led to Rudy Garcia sacking and Walter Mazzari's second gig at the club. What do you think about that move, bro? Would you have sacked Rudy Garcia? Um You want my you want my honest opinion? I I would prefer it than if you lied to me. I'm gonna lie to you. You're gonna lie no, to no, me. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh I, I really don't think he deserves sack. No? No. Perhaps it was too early. I, I li- listen. So so here's my here's my here's why I say that. Mm. If you were gonna sack him, you sack him before before the resurgency of the, of, of Napoli. Before they started winning again. Before they had these three wins in a row against the club, they should be winning against against the likes of Salernitana and so on. Um, but but you do it then. If you, if you do it four games later, when they've almost solidified their Champions League spot. Because mm-hmm. they, they've won most of their games, they've they had a decent stint in the last three games. Yes, they had a they they lost to Empoli. They sh- you should not be losing to fucking Empoli <laughs> at all. No yeah. way. But I, I feel it was just one of those 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 freak occur- occurrences because they didn't play bad. No, no. And Berisha was a god in this game. He made so many saves, and 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 you know Vara had. A couple of opportunities where he should have scored. There, there were there were a few opportunities. Yeah. And and uh, yes, yeah, okay. They conceded in the very end. They should have conceded. Arguably, Kovalenko had a had a had a very good goal. You know, n- n- no no credit taken from him. But but if you're gonna sack him, sack him four games ago, not when he's re- returned to some kind of form. He's won three games in a row. He almost solidified the Champions League spot, which by the way isn't as simple as 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 of course not as it is. Okay, they have a relatively easy group, but so so does United. And look yeah. where they are. Yeah, exactly. They're they're exactly, about they're exactly. about to get they're, they're about to get knocked out. And they're about to get knocked out. They don't even have football. They don't have Europa League football. So 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 I feel like why would you make the decision four games later or five? How how long it's been? And 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 do it after one bad game again. I think De Laurentiis is very difficult. I've said this on the of podcast. Course, of course, he's a difficult man to work with. Um, I, I think it's stupid. He d- he downgraded by. Letting Spalletti go and making his life difficult. Spalletti deserved a statue. And instead he got criticized by De Laurentiis who can't bear sharing the spotlight. He can't, he doesn't want the spotlight to be shared at any point. He wants all the attention to be on himself and all the accolades to be on, on his end, right? He doesn't want, like sharing that. And then he downgraded by bringing in a manager who hasn't done well since maybe that Champions League round with Marseille back in the day in Rudy Garcia. And he started. He was on his back from the get go, man. Sure, sure. And now he's bringing in. He brought in Mazzari, who's been at the club before, and it seems to be like a, a safe kind of um, signing. Um, I don't. I don't like. I don't like. It's Mazzari's not long football. term. No, but it's very. Uh, once it's, again, it's usually three at the back as well. Granted, he's played all right. He's adapted before, but it's very defensive usually uh, as a style so of football. It's a Mourinho type of football. Uh-huh. I, I really don't think that that's good for Napoli. It doesn't suit Napoli whatsoever. Um, they were very close to signing Tudor, but they failed to give him long term guarantees, and that's another aspect as to where De Laurentiis failed as an owner. Um, De Laurentiis, man, it isn't isn't great at running a football club. <laughs> no, he isn't. I I I, I, I think this could be a real problem for them in the future. Yeah, because if if they go from a couple of bad managers in a row, they're gonna create this this, this they're gonna create this 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 disdain, which is gonna lead to lead to a number of good players leaving. Yeah, yeah. And don't be, don't be said, su- huh? don't be surprised if Ozyman and Kvara both leave this year. Ozyman said he's been injured for a while and he's been talking about how. Um, yes, for him the Premier League is the objective, and his fan, his f- 
friends all support Chelsea. He likes United, but his friends support Chelsea and all that. Like, he's flirting. He's flirting with the Premier League already. I think. I think he's off to. I think he's off to United. When? It could be January. Oh, uh, dude. For him, it is the perfect. But how can United do? How is it sustainable to bring in Hoyland for so much money and then you bring in Victor Ozyman? They're gonna, gonna be they're, cheap. They're gonna, they're gonna sell, huh? Who? United are gonna. They're gonna. They're, there's gonna be. I. I did. The coach is leaving, or half the club is leaving in yeah, January. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, because Maguire, really... Maguire is about to leave for about thirty million already for to West Ham. Apparently, that, that's a headstone. And if if Maguire goes back on the bench, he's leaving. Apparently, to West Ham. That's, yeah. that's gonna be about twenty thirty million already. There are a bunch of players, the likes of Sancho and the likes of Anthony, who are close to leaving as well. So you have some, you have some money back in the back end to, mm. to, to to sort of quell at least the wage gap. Yeah. And then you, you never know with with regards to if they can afford those women or not yet. But surely Chelsea can't. Yeah. With the with 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 the amount of players they brought in this season and their wage bill not being cheap either right now. Yeah, but but the thing is, these prem clubs always seem to find a way to bring in who they want. They do, um, and apparently, um, uh, financial fair play never works there. Yes, it doesn't. Of there are certain exceptions when it comes to financial yes. fair play. Of course. Um, Classic. I was very impressed by Ampoli's game, despite like, even if they just held them to a draw, it would have been a great result. Honestly, man, even the fact that like. Whenever there was a goal kick, you watch these two teams, they would compress into a tight circle in the middle of the pitch. The game was so tight, man. And Napoli didn't allow Napoli any width whatsoever. They kept the game fucking tight. And and, and like that, they could fucking actually have a hold of it. Um, Napoli, granted, wasteful. They they did dominate. Of course, at 65% ball possession. They had 18 shots um, to Empoli's 8 shots. But uh, they they stayed in the game, thanks to Berisha mostly, who was absolutely amazing this game. Um, I think we failed as well to address, by the way, before Manian pulled off a massive save on Banda in the first half. He we did, have, yes. We should have totally given him his flowers, and I think we failed to. But, but here you are, Manian. Here are your flowers. But yes, in the second half, Napoli stepped it up. They put their foot on the gas, but they couldn't quite penetrate. And at the end of the game, Kovalenko, the super sub who had just come on, who hadn't scored a goal in what felt like ages, um, managed to to um, get them all three points over here. And um, and yeah, um, we'll see what Mazzari can do. Do you think he will do better or worse than Rudy Garcia? I think he'll do worse. Worse, yes, I have a feeling too. Um, it would be bizarre if they had to sack him as well before the end of the season. I can, I can, I can also see that happening. Well, I can also see that happening. We had an Instagram uh, DM that said that Mazzari is the unsung kind of leader that Napoli need right now. I, 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 I don't see it. He can. All, he also has a habit of raging at his players and getting extremely angry, and he has a lot of emotional divas there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I think he's gonna have to be careful. Yeah. He can easily get on the wrong side of the likes of Kvara, of Osimen, of Raspadori, of of um, of Lobotka, and they can start to not play well. Yeah, I mean, it can again. It can. It can lead to a resurgency. You can see the likes of Zelensky, um, and 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 other players. You know, coming back into the fray who've had. Um, I want to see I, I'm actually very curious How Politano will play now Because he had mm. a very good spell With Rudy Garcia And I, I wonder If that's going to be reflected With this kind of Defensive mm. title yes, for the I, I wonder if that's Simply a case of Personal form Or coach induced form That's a very good question We'll see we'll Because see. he's been Absolutely brilliant this He year. has He has it was interesting to see him starting with Simeone up front And Raspadori behind him And Raspadori has been doing so well As a, as a lone striker Um and it didn't quite pay off, to be honest with you, um, at all. No. Simeone looked like a shadow of his former self. Yeah. He needs a new club. Uh, Maybe. He said he wants to retire at Napoli. Well, well, if he wants to retire on the bench, go for it. <laughs> Perhaps that's his ambition. Maybe. But yes, I think we should move on to the Derby della Penino with Fiorentina 2, Bologna 1. I must admit, I was quite disappointed by Bologna over here. What, what were your thoughts? I think I think this 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 goes back to my point where I said that Bologna will eventually stay relatively where they are, just outside that um, that um, you know European football European spot. football spot exactly, um, and and that's because I I just feel like they don't have the number of quality players to trump the bigger teams, mm. like the, you know the likes of Xerxy and the likes of 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 Ferguson. And and the likes of um, who's a Swedish player right now? Freuler. Yeah, and and you know there, there are a bunch of players who will definitely help them out, 
in, in, in the smaller games. I think they're Swiss. Not Swedish. Wait, wait. Yeah. I don't know if you said Swiss or Swedish. Sweden. There's some of the Swedish players, isn't there? Um, he plays as an attacking midfielder. An attacking midfielder who's Swedish for... Ah, ah you're talking about Christensen. There we go. Christensen, yeah. yes. So th- these kinds of players could pose a huge threat against you know the likes of, of uh, Monza, Torino... Udinese so swallow. Yeah, the, the, these kinds of players may get get you that that goal, that edge over a team mm-hmm. man. But against a bigger club, I'm not totally sure. And I think the only person who can really pose a major threat against a bigger club, you know, which in this case would be Fiorentina, is simply Xerxes. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I love the way he struck the penalty. Oh my god! It was it was so struck. smooth. It was man. struck with like if you wanted if she, if we said to somebody strike that ball perfectly, yeah, yeah, just yeah. send the clip of that full of that penalty. It was yeah. struck with two, such power. Two beautiful penalties. This game. Holy shit! Even Nico's penalty. Yeah, was, he laughed before he no, took it. No, but this one was another level, man. Yeah. The way the way that Xerxes managed with a weird run up to yeah. smack it so yeah. hard. Yeah. It's impressive, man. And so accurately as well. The yeah. ball did not move. Just, yeah. The ball just literally transported from one side to the other. Yeah. It was honestly lovely penalty. Honestly, if you're hearing this, bro, incredible <laughs> penalty. Please come to Mott and teach me how to strike a ball like that. <laughs> I I think that like they can potentially ask for forty million now for Zergzi. The way he's been playing easy. this season. Easy, yeah. easy, easy. What a player, man. What an absolute brilliant Technically gifted, smart player, man. And let's let's give credit to your favorite, favorite Bonello, Bo, uh, not not Bonello, your favorite um, uh, Bambino, ah. Bonaventura. Bonaventura, oh, what a goal! What a goal! He's the Jude Bellingham of Italy, bro. <laughs> Honestly, slightly a, a bit older, a little bit older, yes, <laughs> a little bit more human because Bellingham's uh-huh. a freak. But yes, but Bonaventura is fantastic, and, yes. and what a goal he scored. Um, you, Parisi, think, you, you think he had like a stick the Fiorentina after the game? Do you think I would, sir? Do you think he had a stake the Fiorentina after the game? Like, do you think the club that said, you know, you deserve a, st- a stake the Fiorentina is basically uh-huh. a really um, um, fancy stake? Fancy stake, first of all, and it's 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 it's, quite, it's basically almost rare. Like, you you, uh-huh. you cut the meat, it like just melts Red, in half. Oh, fuck me! And I can imagine like the club just, just gave him the best steak possible, just <laughs> getting that going, bringing you know, you deserve this steak. God knows, man. I bet you Zola hasn't had a steak in years. No, I think he's getting his a uh, stick on his ass. So. I was surprised that Fiorentina won this. Um, and Zola was terrible, and they took him off, and they played with a false nine. Uh, oh no, I'm so surprised! And, and because Beltran was injured, um, and and they do play better without a nine. I feel. I feel like it's one of those situations where where in Zola, I don't think should be should be starting every game. I think he's a very situational type of player right now. Um, He's so streaky. There are some games where he looks unplayable. There are some games where he looks bloody Un- useless and he barely touches the ball. You're going you're gonna to tell me he's looked unplayable at Fiorentina. He hasn't looked unplayable at Fiorentina ever. There we go. Uh, that, to be that, honest, that was my point. Yes, yes. The only game I can think of in recent history where he looked unplayable was back when he was at Spezia and he had that game against Inter where they couldn't they couldn't keep up with him. Man. He was just getting the ball, holding it up, turning. He was doing what he wanted. It's confidence, bro. It could be confidence. It's confidence. It could be. Yes, um, Parisi gave away the penalty um, by handling the ball. Um, Zergzi's celebration involved the bang bang. I like this one. Yeah, I love it too. He, the thing is, he bang banged the Fiorentina fans, right? Oh, and, shit. and the referee told him off immediately, and, and Zergzi and, had and to apologize. The same thing. And then Nico did the same thing, not to mention. And um, if he's getting told off for for celebrating with with a gunshot celebration, do you remember the Coppa Italia final when Benatia scored two goals against Milan? Mm-hmm. He took off fucking gunning down everyone in San Siro. Like, like uh, that. he should be in prison for that in that case. What about celebration by, um, was it the Canio? The, the, the oh, salute. The salute. Oh, that's fucking terrible. The, the, you, I mean, you, you shouldn't be throwing that to begin with. Yes. I, mean, I saw if, one in a minnow league recently. If, a player did that. If, and it was like, a, the, the caption was something like, player points to his grandma in the stands. <laughs> like, like, no, I'm, that, sure, I'm sure, yeah. That's not what he's doing. <laughs> I, think, I think his grandma uh, is, is, is being referred to Hitler. But anyways, um, I, 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 I don't know if you're, if you're just going to criticize the celebrations now. I think we're getting to a point where... I love celebrations. I love celebrations. Do what the fuck you want. As long as your clothes are still on. There was a celebration against Sassuolo recently. Was it... Uh, who was it who scored the first goal? He celebrated in a really particular way. It was one second. Um, the young... No, it was Ikumweze. Yes, Ikumweze. 
Mm-hmm. He goes on the floor and crawls like a like a cat, a tiger. And, like scratch, like a tiger, a cat, a lion. I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do, but that would irk me if a player scored against my team and celebrating that. Let's punch him. Yeah. <laughs> or or if, if if I'm gonna be defender, he's gonna get one in the chest <laughs> <Yeah>. afterwards. <laughs> but I love I love provocative celebrations. I mean, it's, it's, game, it's yeah. just it's just a part, it's just a way to trigger the opponent. Yeah. I mean, like, if if we're, if we're gonna get told off for that, like. It really highlights the competitive nature I, I, of the game. I, I, I don't. I think there comes to a point where we have to just like literally be a bit real with ourselves and say, yes. you know, this is this is part of the game. Yes. You know, we we can't we can't we can't, we can't like go off too far from what the game is. Which, we can't just neutralize it's a, everyone. It's man. entertainment. It boring. It's entertainment, man. You yeah. know, I know, I know it can trigger people. I know it can be offensive to some things, but. Unless you're being racist, unless you're being homophobic, unless you're just blatantly being rude, we have to be a bit neutral. Yes, agreed. Like I don't mind the celebration where you fu- where you shush the opposition. Of course fans. not. It's great, of course, man. It's, it's, great. it's basically putting them in their place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. totally you know, if, totally, you, if, totally. if you if you've been harassed the whole game, go being called a shit player, or whatever, and you score a goal, go shush them till till the cows come home. My favorite one, my favorite striker in recent history in the Premier League has been Jamie Vardy. Really, Sim- simply because, dude, he he plays with with an agenda. <laughs> he wants to to shut everyone up constantly. He will mock anyone he scores against. He scores against fucking. Can you guess my favorite fight? My favorite celebration. Your favorite celebration from a, from an. I'm gonna give you a hint from an English striker. From an English striker. English. So I'm giving. It, he's English. He's English. Um, English striker celebrity can't think he, of a single one. He's right retired now. right now. And is it and Wayne Rooney when no, he extends his okay, arm? Oh, oh, he's retired right now, and he did not play for United. He didn't play for United. And he's retired. Uh, I can't oh, tell me, bro. I'm never gonna guess this. It's I. It's an iconic sort of. It's a cringe. Is it Crouch the robot? Yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's so, so good. <laughs> I love it. He's so lively. I love it so Dude. much. <laughs> that mold of player where you're too tall to be playing football and you're doing so well, I love it. It's, it's shades of nowadays there's Lorenzo Lucca, who's kind of yeah. the same. We saw the return of Simeon Wankwo for Salernitano, yes. six foot six. He was absolutely dreadful. <laughs> dreadful he was, but I must admit, I love watching him. But he needs play. time. Yes. He needs time. He need, but I don't know if he'll get time after that display because he was fucking woeful, dude. He, right. he couldn't even control the ball at any point. Like, any time the ball went to him, he lost it. It's crazy. I, I don't know. Not I mean, to mention, he's so lanky, he can't even win an aerial duel despite being 6'6. Six, six. I love the guy, and when he was at Crathorne, I. Loved watching him, and even in Serie B, where he was fucking good. Um, but nowadays, I don't know. I, I don't think he's going for the to to play at the highest level. Could be personally. Maybe in Serie B, he needs some time there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But yeah, in the 38th minute, there was a massive miss by Salah Makers with a left-footed volley. He was totally unmarked. I think he had time to take the ball down over there. I think he did. Yes, I think he did. I, th- I think that that's just the, that's just the Salah Makers thing. He always panics. Always panics, and I think he just gets he gets nervous in front of goal. Mm. And it leads to the wrong decision most of yeah. the time. Uh, I think it's an experience thing. He hasn't had many situations no. in big games where he gets big chances. But no. but he he should be improving. Yeah. Um, Christensen last week we had a question about Christensen um, about how um, if he's fallen out of favor with yeah. Mota, and then all of a sudden Mota played him and he gave away a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah. And then Nico Gonzalez smiling before the penalty like it's nothing, like he's at the playground, like he's on a fucking picnic taking a penalty against a friend. He just how, laughs and he takes it and he takes it so casually. With a slight okay, how he has blossomed this year is, is something else. Nico uh, Gonzalez, oh, he's amazing. He is. He's amazing. And I I don't know, play, like him and Lautaro Martinez aren't even six feet tall. And I think they're the two players in the league who are the most dangerous in the air when it comes to their head. Like potentially Giroud might be better than them, but, yes. but they're... Their headers are fantastic. And they win them, man. They win their 50-50s and they win their headers. Absolutely amazing. Goes to show you must have a great center of gravity and a great like determination to win the duel to, to do that. But yeah, do you think Fiorentina deserved this victory? Overall, I think they had the edge. Just enough, but I think they had the edge. Yeah. Um, Bologna dominated the possession at 61% um, ball possession but, but the they, they shots barely, the they, barely they, did not, they barely did anything the possession exactly. I, I just feel like it was, it was possession for possession's sake yeah, yeah when you have a double pivot of Freuler and Arbisher you're going to have possession yeah, yeah. but yeah um, Fiorentina continue to 
well, not continue to climb up the table. They actually return after three losses in a row. They have bounced back, and they currently find themselves in sixth with twenty points. While solid, solid, solid place. Yeah. While Bologna are in eighth with eighteen points, also also solid also place. solid place. Yes. Yeah, they will be contenders for that conference league spot for sure. Both teams. Yes. The next game was Udinese one, Atalanta one, and I'm gonna start off by asking you a question: Did you see Wallace's goal? Uh, I did. Long, it's, long range shot. Yes, and it just deflected. deflected. Yeah. I mean, that's terrible, right? That's, I mean, it's, 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 I think it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. At the point, point, like when I watched the goal, I was like, this, this, like, did it count? I was, I was wondering, like, yeah. if, it, if it was going to be cancelled. Everyone was confused when he scored. Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, what's going on? And there was a whole confusion before Samar issued the poster earlier, oh like God, there was all yeah, that like, thing, and then all of a sudden Samar's Wallace just has it. And I have never seen Wallace take a long range shot in my too. life. Like I think I think he was just like, you know what, balls to the walls. Yeah. I'm going for this. Sorry guys in advance. Yeah. Um, We're trying it out. Apparently he wasn't so sorry. Yeah. Um, slow start for Atalanta. Udinese's defensive setup will always cause problems. They are a tight unit. They might not win many games, but they hardly ever lose, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, there are missed opportunities from Atalanta's end, and Udinese have this ability to capitalize on their half chances, and that is essentially what led to the draw over here. Ederson, a man we praised last week, scored an equalizer in the I mean, dying minutes of the game. It's nice when you praise someone and it it, it, and it, it works. I mean, it, it doesn't work. So they, they, they just show up in the next game. I mean, again, it seems to be not a, an insane amount of quality, but he seems to be getting in the right place at the right time a bit more often this season. I can't believe what Gasparini's done to this guy. Like, he's totally transformed him. He was never this type of player, man. He was a more offensive-minded kind of half-winger, like Mazzala type of player, um, with a lot of offensive freedom. Nowadays, he's a system, he's a cog in this Atalanta machine, as a, a f- part of the double pivot with Cook Miners in this game, like, playing so deep and doing so well, and still having this kind of goal prowess about his game I think at a point he does have this slight flexibility where he can go he can, he can play a bit aggressively and go mm. up front and try, at least try push into the box and be another man in the box to try get you know uh, a, a finish in the box yeah. so 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 um, there I, I feel like yeah, you're right like he's he's way more systematic he's way more involved as a unit as a team but he has a bit of liberty up front to, to get into a position to shoot. He, yeah, he, totally. He had it on three separate occasions this season. So yeah. I feel like there is some form of, of liberty where he can kind of play the football we're more known to him playing against, like with the likes of Sonerina Son- Son- Tana, for example. Yeah, Atalanta love an adaptable player, man. You look at the likes of Coop Miners, Ederson and Pasalic, you can play them in any of the midfield I think roles. Pasalic is a bit worse, to be honest. Pa- Pasalic uh, hasn't been as good. And, and one I, think, of my I think he's going to be leaving soon. I thought Pasalic, personally, had all the makings for a player who had a long career. I, 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 really, I really believe so as well. Because he's really intelligent. Yes. And when you see a player who's so intelligent and so aware of where he should be positionally and has the technique to... has enough technique to score or give that final pass, I, that, that's a player who can play up to 35 but easily. I, I think he has a lack of energy. That's, yeah. And I, I, I think that's a real, like... And lack like, of playing time as well. Huh? Nowadays, it's yes, a bit better, but last season, he barely figured. Yes, I, I, feel like, I feel like for Gasparini, that lack of... Um, uh, let's imagine I've thought for a second, sorry. Basically, I feel like as a, as a player, I, I just don't think he's a Gasparini player, in all honesty. I, I know in the past he used to be. I know in the past he used to be very adaptable. He used to play anywhere he, anywhere he was needed. And play his heart out. What do you think it is? I think confidence is a major confidence, part. I think right. confidence yeah. is a major part of it. And I, I also feel like he's grown out of the system a bit. I think Pasalic might look at his career and think, I have never cemented my spot in a team. It's a bit sad, to be honest. It is, it is. Because he, he totally deserves it. He's 28 years old nowadays, man. Yeah, That's he's crazy. Age. Like, he's our age, yeah. 28 yeah. years old. I really wanted to, I, I I wanted wanted to find to a club, man. I, I, I don't care if he goes to the you know, but I want to see him play every single yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he deserves it because he's not the type, yeah. of, type of player. I don't even know maybe if lazy was the right word to describe never, him. But he's never been lazy, though. But I, I feel he has a bit of lack of energy, though. Maybe it's a fitness issue. It could be. 
I don't know, man. It could I be think, a Muriel. For leash. example, if you look, but Muriel, by the way, has has rejuvenated a little bit. He's he's looking way more eager huh? nowadays. He's actually pressing, man, and he's I, actually. I trying. don't know. I think I think he's also a player who needs to leave this season as well. Maybe, but but he hasn't been as bad as he was last season, definitely. My bro, which was, you, to be you, honest, harder to get worse. You, you need. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think with the likes of Skamaka and Lukman up front, you need a third striker who's a bit who's a bit younger on his feet and ready, ready, ready to, to challenge these two players. Again, Muriel is a high IQ player, the same kind of player, right? Um, but they're past men. Yeah. I, I know I know you keep praising them. I know that they're good players. I'm not saying that they're bad. They deserve to keep playing in Serie A. But not for this team. But not for Atalanta, really. I yeah. think. I think they've passed like, their points. Like, I can see Pasalic playing instead of Castillejo as a track white. This, that's a swallow. Sure, I, Why could, not? I could definitely like, see yeah. it. I could see the likes of Moria playing as the main striker for... Fucking... Verona. Yeah. yeah. All game, every easily, game. Easily, yeah. yeah. Do they want to go to those moves? Do they want to go to a smaller club? Probably not. But at the point, you have to realise what you want to do in football as yeah. well. Do yeah, you want maybe. to sit on the bench and play 10, 20 minutes? Maybe. Or go to Saudi, yeah? Oh, God. Don't get me started. I don't mind it. Yeah, no. Not for me. <laughs> so, yes. Um, yeah, we can move on to yeah.